David Zaritsky, License to Shill, History of Vlogging. I could be speaking to my own reflection. Only your YouTube channel dies after the movie. Mine will survive long after no time to die. History hasn't been kind to men who make vlogs. Play God like George Burns? No, 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 I, I, I didn't say God. I, I said vlogs. Vlogs. You mean like Morgan Freeman play God? Are you even listening to me? You know, I think Groucho played God once. <sighs> this never happened to the other fella. David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I'm here clearly to talk about No Time to Die. And this is a very special video because it's a, it's a long time in coming. Obviously, the way I'm dressed in this rag and bone Henley, I've got some military tactical pants on, and I even have some combat boots. This can only mean one thing. We're here to talk about James Bond's commando outfit. At least we think it's a commando outfit. But let's hearken back to the first time we saw this outfit. We all lost our minds. It was that sneak picture that came up here. We were looking at the sweater. A lot of us suspected that it could be N. Peel cashmere, and sure enough, it was. Well, we were very excited when we heard the news that it was N. Peel. We've obviously have known the family. We've known the brand for many, many, many years. We call them friends more than brand. But the reality was is we really lost it when we saw this poster behind us, when that image came up and suddenly we had an actual poster that we could all get around. It was Daniel Craig as James Bond. And for a long time, we've always wanted Bond to look like Commander Bond. But Daniel Craig's not the fine suited Commander Bond look. No, he's more like Commando Bond. So we knew this was gonna be a look that we'd all want to emulate. So here's what NPL did. Because they've been connected to the fan community for such a long time, they sent the Bond experience two sweaters, the very first two Commando Navy sweaters anywhere in the world outside of production. They're here and we're gonna unbox and take a look at it right now. Drum roll, please. So we've got the lovely NPL card here. Dear David and Joy, I think I will. Oh, a little nerve wracking. I've, I've, got, to, I've got to tell you, a lot, of, uh, a lot of positive emotions going through. Beautiful box. And again, this, this is that 007 branding that we've come to know, and I'm gonna take my time with this. Big box, by the way, pretty thick. So here we go to unveil it, unveil it for the first time. All right. Got to give that a nice little, ri oh, oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Yep. There she is. And inside here we have this size and we have a second size. So we're going to find out which one fits best and why. Love all that pomp and circumstance. I'm sure you do as well. So here it is. Here it is, totally unboxed. You can see that it is absolutely beautiful. It has all these kind of striations. Take a look at this cord right here. This actually will loosen and tighten this incredible boat neck. And this right here, the padding on here, is a lot different than I expected. It's incredibly soft. The merino wool that this is made out of is incredibly soft as well. Now, I got to tell you, I've jumped on right away to the size medium because I think I'm probably going to be a size medium in this, but let's find out for sure. All right, we now have the medium on. And just to complete the outfit, because let's face it, this is all got to come together. These are the... Let me 
hold this up. This is the Miltech military gloves that he wears in the movie. Now, this is not a review on these. We'll have a separate review on these, but you know, we had to be as authentic as possible. So we've got the rag and bone. Um, I believe that the pants themselves were custom. So we threw these tactical pants on and I'm just doing this so we get the whole look. And there we go. There's the whole look. Now, literally, this is right out of the box. Hasn't been pressed, steamed, not that you should anyway, hasn't even been hung up. Um, so the medium right away, it feels good, but I don't know if it has that bond kind of tailored look, but let's take a look at this. First of all, you can see the elbow patches on here. Absolutely beautiful. They're almost like a very thin whaled corduroy, but very, very thin, much softer than you would expect. The ribbed sweater itself, this Merino, when I heard it was 90% Merino, 10% cashmere, I was like, Ooh, I'm going to miss my cashmere feel. I'm telling you folks, the Merino is the softest Merino I've ever felt. I don't know if the camera can pick up this particular detail right here, but there's, there's a, um, kind of like, a, I don't know what you would call this, a guard around the hem that really is beautiful. And it's the same material as the shoulders, as well as the elbows. You can see now this neckline right here, and you can see the white of the Henley coming through in detail and these cords, which again can tighten things up or loosen them as needed. So who wants to see this draw cord in action? Yeah, me, me too. Okay. So let's get up close and personal that this was a real practical thing. There were commando uh, naval sweaters that did this in their time. Uh, it, it was very practical. Actually, this was open, but when a really cool gust came up, you could go like this and it closes the neck. So it actually gives you real protection from the weather, from the wind, from the snow, from whatever you're going through. But in this particular case, we're going to leave it nice and open so you can see that Henley and take in all its glory. Uh, let's take a look at it from the side. Again, I'm 40 up here, 31 down here. This is what it looks like from the side. I got to remember not to, not to throw my shoulders forward. I have sloping shoulders, I've been told. So here we go, just standing still. Here is the medium in the back. From this side, with my arms outstretched like this, etc. It feels good. I mean, the medium feels good. Uh, it's got really good movement to it. That blue, which we're going to talk about a little bit more, that blue, it didn't exist with and peel. They had to actually do several types of blue, but we're going to hear that story a little bit later on. So I don't want to give away too much. Now, here's what's going in my head with this sweater. A lot of excitement. I mean, I'm sitting here in front of the poster. I'm wearing the sweater that we've all coveted for quite a long time. This is a must piece. It's very classic. A lot of you called out and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've seen that before. Of course you had. Um, it's a Navy as in naval commando sweater. You've seen them before in black, in green. Occasionally, very rarely, you would have Navy. So this is something that they wanted to pattern off of to make it very uh, a military look, but something that was uniquely Bond. But I've got a problem with this right now. If you could take a look at the whole outfit again, um, again, these tactical pants aren't the right one. They're kind of billowy, baggy, even the boots. Let's face it, people, you, I, anybody wouldn't go out of the house like this. This is, this feels like cosplay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this outfit into something that I feel could be an everyday look, still capture the look, but not make it like I'm about to have an assault on an evil layer. Let's take a look. Now we're not cosplaying. This is now an outfit that I would actually leave the front door with. First of all, let's pan down for a second and you'll see that I've paired the outfit with a pair of Uniqlo Chino jeans. Now these Chino jeans are a moleskin fabric. Uh, they're thin, 
but they actually do replicate the look and the cut of the ones from the movie without obviously it being military pants. And check this out below. No more military boots. I've got my Crockett and Joan Tet Berries. Thank you very much. You can see this from the side. This looks like a regular outfit, but if you come back up here, clearly this is my no time to die commando navy interpretation outfit. And I think it's important to show you that because you really don't want to go out in a costume. This is invisible bond moments. So let's now get back to the end peel. I do like the medium. I think there is for me a little extra fabric here. Again, it's incredibly soft. It feels great, but it might be a little bit too big for me as far as getting that bond feel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move down to the small. So now we are wearing the small and you'll see from the side and also from the back, this is starting to fit more like the poster. Now, I'm quite certain, but we'll find out soon what size Daniel Craig wore. I would assume it was fully tailored for him, of course, but it's probably closer to the medium than this small. This small, again, I have uh, not as wide a chest as Daniel Craig. Sorry, I've been working on it. Hashtag Bond 25 Fitness Challenge, but I don't. It's not there yet. Now, I may want to do um, just a little bit of movement in here. This is going to give a little bit. What I like about this is if I can come up a little bit closer, you can actually draw these drawstrings in. They are workable. You can tie them and you can move this boat neck in, but I'm liking it a little bit slouchy. I, I kind of want some of that Henley to be peeking out. And of course, to make it screen accurate, trailer accurate, however you want to say it, you want the Henley poking out of the cuffs as well. Now this feels incredibly comfortable feels a little bit more like kind of that military look, if you will. So what is it about military clothing that really connects with all of us and, and creates a style versus a fashion, a style that is indelible and lasts for all time? I think a lot of it is the cut. Military cut should be more to your form. It should be very flattering to your body. You notice that a lot of military cut suits and coats and jackets, for example, aren't all billowy and baggy. No, they are relatively fitted to the individual, not shrunk wrap or shrink wrapped, but you know, it really should show off your particular body. I think it's very flattering. You're going to notice here, for example, the arms on here are not so baggy that you can't see the form of the human arm. In addition, they're not so thin that it looks like it has been painted on. It is a really nice equilibrium or balance of style and how something should look on the human body. That's a lot of the, the military look. And let's face it, military looks, whether it's an epaulet or the, the shoulders or the elbows or even the cut or this color, it just has a badass look. And you want Bond, especially Daniel Craig's Bond, to look badass. I think the stories best told by the costume designer for No Time to Die, Siddharth Larlarp, who spoke to Forbes magazine and said this, the sweater we created for the film is a navy rib sweater in 90% superfine merino and 10% cashmere with 100% cotton canvas patches to the elbow, shoulder, and cuff, providing an authentic army feel. Combining with tapering to the inside neck and a drawstring to pull the neck closed when weather requires. It's a technical sweater, but very practical and wearable. The following is a quote. The idea behind Bond's Navy Commando jumper was born out of a conversation Daniel Craig and I had about a tactical look for Bond in a very specific action sequence in the film. We agreed that there should be something definitive, something that could be practical for the mission at hand, utilitarian and authentic, but also definitively Bond-esque, a strong, iconic and masculine silhouette, a touch of the past, a sophisticated nod to his own military background. Because N. Peel had a history of producing wonderful knitwear for previous Bond films, they were an immediate instinct for collaborating on this particular idea. We required a large number, 24 in total, of exactly matching multiples for the action sequence and Bond's stunt doubles. Working with my brief, 
detailed photographs of authentic commando sweaters, several samples of extent vintage pieces, color thoughts, and technical specs. Adam and the NPL team were able, in a very compressed timeline, to produce a number of sample options for us to consider with frequent progress updates and the occasional technical or aesthetic questions put forth from Adam, I always felt this important piece was in the best hands possible. When you have the number of decisions that you are required to make every day for each and every detail, for every item of clothing, for every character in a film of this scope and size, all the while working across several international time zones and always working towards an impossible deadline, having a collaboration such as the one we had with NPL was a godsend. What an incredible story. What an incredible sweater. I cannot wait to see this in the movie itself. It's uh, a little heady. It's a little amazing to actually have these sweaters here right now. Um, by the time you see this, these could have been launched. Maybe it's pre-launch, who knows, but I am digging it. I, I, I knew I was going to enjoy it when I saw them, even in the making, but now that I have it and I can experience it, wow. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna also consider this a part one video because I wanna wear this out of the wild. I wanna see how this thing performs, but that'll be another video for another time. For now, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna enjoy it. It's snowing out, it's perfect to do this. This has been David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience, and we will see you all very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you wanna be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're gonna get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.